Hi Sarah, I'll just get you to introduce yourself and then we'll start having a chat about your course. Yeah. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Sarah <clears throat> and I'm a mum of two and I work in retail sales. Um, have been in retail for quite some time, nearly 10 years now, so in different capacities. Yeah. Hey Sarah, and you've recently done a course with RMIT Online. Can you tell us a little bit more about it and why you decided to do the course? Yeah, so the course I embarked on um, was on business analytics and visualization. So taking data, refining it, and then being able to visualize it or present it in a way that's compelling so that people can understand the story from that data. Um, I think the reason why I did that was having after having conversation with my manager, my skip manager, you know, it, career-wise and identifying gaps in my expertise, I thought this was really useful, especially since data, you know, is used in so many different areas of our lives yeah. from our work in a commercial sense or even in marketing or if you're on social media as well, these analytics that come through. I think understanding data is such a big part of our lives now. It would be remiss not to be getting on board of it, um, on board with it. Um, and I also had a friend who just finished the course. So that was really helpful and insightful for me. She taught me a little bit more about it. And so when I did more of my research, I thought, oh yeah, it's ticked a few boxes. You know, it was only about six weeks. So it was manageable. I could dip my toe into a mm -hmm. short course and sort of figure out um, how that would work with family and work commitments and be able to, you know, manage my time accordingly. Yeah. So that's why I thought, all right, let's give it a go. <laughs> that's great. And did you go with RMIT online for a particular reason? Did you look at others and then thought, well, this, this is probably the best way for me to go? Yeah. Well, I've actually been researching, um, causes to do for personal and work development for actually quite some time now, more than a year. Um, I looked at like London School of Economics, mm -hmm. I was looking at Wharton. Um, and I think as, as, as the more you look, <laughs> the price points tend to go a bit higher. Yeah. Um, and so when my friend recommended the RMIT, I was like, oh, you know, RMIT is a recognizable brand. Mm -hmm. um, it's Melbourne based. So if you had classes, at least it would be with colleagues or, you know, with people that around the same time period. Yeah. Um, it was short as well and it was affordable. So that's why I thought, all right, I'll, I'll just do that. It sounded re really interesting. A little bit of research. Mm. All right, well, I, and it's ticked the boxes, so I decided to go ahead with it. That's great. Um, yeah. What could you give us some of the highlights, whether it's from the course itself or just from studying with RMIT Online? What was helpful to you? Yeah. Um, from the course itself, I think it's been a while since I've last studied. So it was a huge learning curve. It was a very steep learning curve, particularly because, um, you know, I come from an arts and communications background. I worked in a nonprofit sector before our, um, it being in retail for a yep. while as well. So this is quite challenging and really new for me. So I felt that the the fact that you had mentors that could guide you, you also had like a Slack channel where you could reach out to your fellow colleagues. Mm -hmm. That was really quite a highlight for me because it didn't yeah. feel like you were doing it alone. That's right. You know, you'll be attending like the webinar, but at least you didn't feel like you're doing it by yourself and it's just you in an online course. Yeah. And the great thing is doing it online as opposed to being in person. Of course, for most of us in lockdown, we can't do it in person at the moment anyway. Um, it's the fact that you can actually revisit the modules and, yes. you know, really learn at your own pace and sort of fit it into your lifestyle as well as your commitment. So, yeah. you know, I'm like a night owl. I do my best learning after eight when the kids are in bed. But for you, if you're a morning person and you find getting up at five o'clock in the morning, it's, you know, easier, then oh, that's yeah. great. That's the other point. option I had was also um, a mobile option. Yes. So, you know, when I drop the kids off at swimming, that sort of thing, I could actually sneak in a few little like multiple choice questions and learning for my assignments. And so that was quite helpful for me as well. Just the fact that it was portable um, and that it was um, available on different platforms. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, these are the things that, you know, people are not sure about. How am I going to do it? You know, what's how am I going to organize my time? So it's great that you brought up that you're, you're a night owl. I'm the same. Um, <laughs> and, you know, sometimes you think, well, there's only 24 hours in a day. So how do I break up those chunks and where do I find opportunities to learn, right? 
So, um, and that's great. And for people who don't know where to start, you know, I usually just mm-hmm. recommend, and I don't know if you did this as well, like a little timetable to say, you know, Monday to Friday, I'm going to try and slot in an hour somewhere. And just, you know, especially once lockdown is lifted and everyone goes back to their routines, um, you know, obviously after school activities, swimming that you mentioned on weekends or whatever, and you have to actually now find the time to go, okay, you know, where can I actually fit in a module or two, for example. Yeah. Um, doing it on my lunch breaks as well for yeah, work. So that yeah. one hour was just like quickly doing a little module and yeah. moving along with them. For some people, you could be doing on public transport when you're That's commuting right. to work as well. So yeah, exactly. finding those gaps to fit in where you can with learning. So not just with RMIT, but with whatever course you decide to embark on. Yes. I think it's finding what works for your situation, your family, and then prioritizing mm-hmm. and then time management, like you mentioned. Yeah, so I guess that leads to my next question. How did you manage studying while keeping up with other commitments? I mean, you've mentioned a few things there, but like what about if we delve in, you know, the focus and mindset? Like it's obviously one thing to kind of read through things, but how do you make it stick with all the other things that, you know, you've got your priority list. Everyone has a list these days. How do you make what you're reading stick and, you know, do you then say to yourself, oh, look, I'm going to need to focus a little bit more on this section, so I'm going to come back to it later tonight? How do you go about yeah. that? A hundred percent. I think there are parts of that, you know, like I mentioned earlier, it's such a steep learning curve, learning about data, because it's not something I'm comfortable with. It's really, this course really took me out of my comfort zone, <laughs> um, but it was a gap that I felt like would be useful to fill. Yeah. Um, and it was just really, I think, with homeschooling with the kids I've learned about growth mindset and it's just telling myself and motivating myself that way that look it's going to be hard might not get it immediately Mm -hmm. but if you keep at it you will get better yeah yeah. so for example something that was meant to take me an hour took me about eight hours just trying to figure out how to do it on excel (laughs) it was really hard um, but, you know, just that persistence and yeah. determination just to be able to push through it. And of course, if it's, you know, like we learned back when we were in high school and uni, if it's hard for that moment, maybe take a break mm-hmm. and then come back to it with a fresher mind. Right. Or maybe leave it for now and then skip over to a module that will be easier for you and then come back to it at a later time. Find what works for you and how yeah. your brain sort of um, engages with the content and with the topic. Um, I think those are really um, great tips as well. But not giving up, I think that's a, that's the biggest thing I can say. You know, <laughs> and, you know that's, that's a really good point, like going to something that's a little bit easier to take in because that gives you that bit of motivation, right? You're like, okay, I get that. So, you know, I'm not completely out of it. Like, I get that bit. So let's right. see if I can get the other bit now. And taking breaks is really important. You know, go for a walk, yeah. get that glass of water go distract yes. yourself with something else um and that that happens whether you're studying or with work as well when you're trying to figure things out at work. Yeah. Yeah. um you know so that's great and what did you do um what were the challenges of the course so you mentioned the the one hour for everyone else and it eight hours yeah. era. um were there any other challenges and how did you overcome them i think yeah basically having that really being out of my comfort zone and engaging material that I'm really not comfortable with and Mm. not something I'm familiar with I think that would took a lot out of me as well I think on top of that you know during that period we went into lockdown so I had to layer on homeschooling all the time so I had planned for this I'd taken some time off work for annual leave to do a study leave I was like this is great I'm gonna be able to concentrate and be able to manage my time and then suddenly you're thrown into homeschooling yeah. Well, uh, it really layered another um, <laughs> layer of stress for me. Yeah, yeah. So that was particularly challenging. Um, I think you just find that, you know, I had a very supportive partner. So before I embarked on the course, mm-hmm. we talked about it. I said, you know, we're usually equal partners when we're at home anyway. Yes. And he runs his own business. We have a small cafe around the corner. So for him to take a little bit more on what was really helpful, um, and then having that support network, like I said, you know, he was being more supportive. The kids understood what ha- needed to happen. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and even the online community I had with my mentors and my fellow um, 
students, my classmates who were really happy to help out as well if you had a question. I think those were some of the factors that helped me overcome these challenges that I was facing as well. So my advice is really, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to your support networks. You know, you might have family who could take the kids for a couple of hours so that you can concentrate on studying. You may not, like me, because my family is overseas. Um, Find what works for you. Um, And then you'll be surprised at how, like, asking your mentors who are really happy to even reply me and email me and, you know, Teams or Slack message me at nine o'clock at night for a question that I had. Um, I had classmates that, you know, had these, like, really amazing answers during the webinar. I'm like, how did you come to that conclusion? I did not. I'm like, how did you find that? You know, so I, 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 you know, just message them and they're like, oh, I did these, these, these steps, you know, you could probably find a different formula to come to the same conclusion as I did. You'd be surprised at how people are willing to help because there's a sense of like, you know, we're all learning this together, yeah. you know, that some, for some people, you know, they're really happy to help out. So I think I really say take advantage of that. You know, yeah. you paid for the course. Yes. You, you know, everything. you get to ask as many questions as you want. That's what my mentality was. <laughs> that's great. And that's a really good approach. Um, and did RMIT Online give you all the modules in advance, like all your learning materials in advance? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, that's a really good good thing as well because then you can control how much you want to do, I guess, and how if you want to go ahead or if you want to go with the weekly schedule as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I love that, you know, that you can go on your on your Slack channels and ask the questions because I think that's a really um, good sense of, you know, community learning. Like they may have some strength in analytics, but you've got your strength in retail from your experience. And that's where it's great when you do a course because everybody from different industries come together. Everybody from yeah. different backgrounds, different comfort levels. You know, you say this is out of your comfort zone. It might be something that's really easy for others but then if they start talking about retail that's out of their comfort zone but it's really easy for you um so that's that's a really good way of looking at it and that's the advantages of i guess learning and putting yourself out there um you really build that network with people from different industries exactly in my course i had someone who was in property and real estate i had someone else that was in council i mean all these different facets of life just require data and analytics now so yeah yeah, it was really really great to meet people yeah and i think this is what people don't hear often about you know going out there and doing a course or um going through some development they it's all you know people focus on the learning materials and the assignments but it's all these benefits um that you know it's only when we start talking about it that people go oh okay so i get to meet different people you get to network and you get to chat about different things and open your mind a little bit to what what else is out there right um yeah so have you used what you've learned uh from the course yeah so to varying extents i have just looking at the numbers from work and then being able to break down a few things as well so that's been quite useful yeah. um, particularly in retail we've been locked down in melbourne for a long time so i haven't been able to apply it to my own counter but yes. you know i've been doing that on a general wider basis um and also for the online area where i'm working right now um, for the company that I work for mm-hmm. um, but I'm looking forward to you know when lockdown lifts and really applying and using that um, that skill set that I've learned um, on a broader basis once I get yeah. back into the thick of things <laughs> yeah, yeah. but it's very helpful um, oh one of the things that we did during the course was to create a case study so I was able to use the data from my husband's cafe right. and create a bit of a story from there so that was really helpful for his business just to be able to see That's you know great. for example you know how lockdown has affected sales what um, he should focus on selling you know what coffees for example are, are, are bringing more returns on investments wow. so i think that was great for, that was a, a good learning outcome for him yeah. um in that sense <laughs> so he's able to that's direct right. some promotions and that sort of thing and build up a little small business on the side yeah so yeah. very useful in that way <laughs> yeah and you know that's a really good example of taking what you've learned and also you you get to i assume you get some templates of tools from the course yeah. that you did and then you you'd be able to practice using them in, in real life scenario which is amazing um yeah. and that's the other thing as well of, about doing a course it's it's really good if you can apply it straight away because then you don't forget what you've learned right um so sarah who would you recommend this course to 
Yeah. Um, I feel that the, you know, analytics and data is part of so many industries and oh. so much a part of our everyday life. You know, when you go onto Twitter or to Instagram, they use analytics as well. Yes. Um, if you find that you want to make better decis- better business decisions oh. based on data, um, you have clearer objectives in your decision making process at work, um, even if it's to find out, you know, where's the best property to buy or invest right in. Point. I think, yeah, those are things that, you know, this course would really help to encourage and give you a better understanding of what directions to take and how to look at it quite objective as well and how to break it down to be able to um bring your communication and messaging clearer because it's not just about business analytics of course i think it was about visualization yeah. so how do you look at the data interpret it and present it in a compelling way to make a story to convince people yeah. i think that's part of our everyday life as well nowadays yeah yeah and i think you know when when you present data as it is it can be quite boring right yeah but if you actually if you actually convert that into a story that people can relate to, as you know, you mentioned, you know, where, where should I buy my next property? Which area should I invest in? That's like, oh, I want to know that. Like, you know, I want to hear more about this. And and suddenly you've got them locked in and, and you can start talking about the data and actually, you know, going through some ideas, some decision making, um, you know, helpful hints. And, and that's what people can take away from it. So that's a really good point. Um, so more importantly, how did you celebrate your achievement? Oh, <laughs> I had a big old glass of wine. <laughs> to go, I did it. Um, it was it was really great. I, I I got a little badge from RMIT as well, so I put it on LinkedIn just to announce. I saw that. Um, <laughs> great because then you know had lovely people give me feedback and say oh congratulations to actually tell me more about it as well um and I think I really thank my my family as well just yeah. for putting up with my frustration definitely <laughs> and just disappearing and not being there um uh, but it was a small achievement it was only six weeks I think the next time if I do do like a longer course yeah. you know something that's big it's gonna I'll go out for a big big meal I think <laughs> Well, you know, I think it's really important to achieve, like, to celebrate your achievements. Like, I remember um, thinking to myself, okay, you, you work hard for this assignment or assessment task and you think, okay, I finally did it. Like, even just submitting, you know, I remember submitting my very first assignment after not studying for a long time. That was a big deal for me. Yeah. So um, I think, you know, celebrating is really important and I'm glad that you did. And I'm glad you mentioned family as well because you know they're the ones who kind of go well mum's busy like i can't talk to her because she's got her assignments to do or you know now i've got to go to dad so that those little adjustments you obviously show your appreciation that your children um can actually see that and understand why so another this is like a side question that i didn't list but did you have a conversation with your your kids i know you've discussed with your husband obviously but did you explain to them what you were doing and why you were doing it what did you think that was important to do yeah we didn't have a big conversation it was more the fact that look kids you know i might not be as available because mommy really needs to focus on this so mm-hmm. that i could um I, I think I explained it to them in a very general way. You yeah. know, it's like, oh, you know, mom's upskilling. I'm taking this time away from us right now so that I can focus on developing myself. And yeah. by upskill, that also creates more potential and more earning potential yeah. to be useful for myself. And that could enable us to have yeah. a better life as well. So when I, you know, broke it down like that to them, they they understood yeah. um, quite quickly as well. And then they went back on their iPads, so they weren't bothered. <laughs> so, that all? Okay, but we still have Wi Fi. <laughs> yeah, they're like, that's fine, Mom. We don't need you. We've got our iPads. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I think it's really important, though, to, to have those conversations. And it's, you know, it's great when they get older and they, they think about something like, oh, my mom did it. You know, yes. oh, my dad was, my mom and dad managed when my mom wanted to do some development. Yeah. So it's really great for them to look back and say, well, that was a really good example, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's the huge thing you've touched on, Jelby. Yeah. Think, um, which, you know, that's also reminding me that um, a huge part of what I did was also to, ha- as a role model yes. for my kids, I want them to know that learning doesn't 
end yes. at the end of your formal education learning a constant place you know i love learning you know we learn in so many ways not just formally like studying but yeah. and doing a course but we learn you know in conversations and whatever we absorb from the media you know mm. i want them to be open and constantly open to learning yes. and so to be able to role model for them and say my mom tackled a course you know later on in life it was not <laughs> yeah <laughs> she survived it we survived so we survived it's all right you know yeah. um i think that was a huge legacy that i felt like i needed to leave for them as well yeah, yeah and that's great you know and i think people really underestimate the power of that um you know consciously always questioning can i learn more about this is there anything else that i don't know about this and actually admitting to yourself humbly that well i'm not an expert in this area but i want to learn more i'm open to finding out more information um or sometimes you know you might be good at doing something at a practical level but you don't really know the theory and you go well maybe i should do that and then once i learn the theory it will actually enrich what i can um you know contribute so all those aspects really come together and I think this is where you know when you have a family it's really important to for them to understand why you're doing something um obviously some sort of time frame so they know it's not forever um and yeah. the other thing people are so scared of going into learning because they think oh now I'm gonna have to give up my weekends or I'm gonna give up two hours and but it's not forever as you said it's only for six weeks that's how we start off with just six weeks yeah. um yeah, so did you want to say something about that, Sarah? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the end point, it's just, mm -hmm. it might be for six weeks, it might be for six months if you're yeah. doing a large course, it might be for three years. Yeah. But then where would the next, how does that set you up That's for the right. next 10 to 20 years of your life? You know, yes. you could be mid-career and you decide that you want to pivot to a different industry, you know, or what you're doing now you've sort of done it for a really long time and you're not quite sure why you're doing it anymore you decide i want to change career directions you know having that little bit of like investing in yourself i find yeah investing in yourself for your future and future proofing your career i think that's a very very valuable skill to have yeah um, absolutely in your life because i mean i look at my dad he's in his 70s he's just taken a digital marketing course <laughs> it's like dad what are you doing <laughs> yeah it's great and i find that um, you know, there, there's really no no end date, right, to learning, as you said. Um, so it's really where your curiosity takes you and right. how much you want to push yourself outside your comfort zone, because that's the other right. aspect as well. Um, and so that brings me to my next and final question. What's next for you in terms of investing in yourself or further development or, you know, your career? What What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. <clears throat> It's an interesting one because I find that having been in, um, like, you know, in retail and in sales for so long, I really want to be able to expand that, not just for a bricks and mortar, because that's yes. where typically I'm in, but, you know, um, exploring areas like in e-commerce or even the digital and online world, which can be foreign to me. It's not completely foreign, but yes. can be in certain aspects. So, I mean, I definitely see myself moving into a direction like that and possibly learning a little bit more of that what that area so i find that the course that i did can set me up for future learnings as yeah. well um but I, honestly who knows what's going to happen in next five yeah, years yeah. as well but at least you know <laughs> you can right you you've Correct. done this for six weeks and you know yeah. and for some people that may have lit a spark and they're like okay what's next what do i want to study next um, but I guess you know that you're capable, um, you know, your family can also, you know, support you on that and your kids are okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's really, there's a lot of opportunities out there and it just depends. Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. I think next steps is just really exploring and finding out what I can, with this new, you know, skill set, what can I bring to work and yeah. bring to life? And then from there, see what other things i can learn as well i mean i'm a lifelong learner yeah. so i don't mind <laughs> so we'll, we'll have another conversation similar to this one probably next one so um but you know sarah thank you so much for taking this time um you know to, to have a chat as i said it's really if we can inspire one one person to go out there and and do some learning i think we've done our job um 100%. but it's really you know about learning sharing and empowering others um 
and you know when they hear conversations like this then they can stop listing all the, the, the reasons why they shouldn't do something and they can start going well actually from what Sarah said there's actually a lot of reasons why I should actually go for it yeah. um, you know and that's what's important uh, so thank you so much and um, you know all the best with what you're doing with your course whether it's at the cafe or in your workplace as you said, you know, it's, it's applicable at so many levels. Um, and I find that you can, there's, there's no experience that's wasted. So, yeah. you know, you've got a lot of experience in retail, so there's nothing wrong, nothing stopping you from combining that. And now your new analytic skills and visualization yeah. skills to put those things together. So I think, you know, um, it's going to be great to see, and I'm looking forward to see what you do in that space. Um, anything you want to say um, in closing, Sarah? Uh, no, I, I think for anyone who's tested it, I think just give it a go. Yeah, it <laughs> doesn't have to be too much, just whatever little you can do. Even if it's just like a, you know, a four hour workshop that mm. you could take, you know, on a short course, dip your toes in it and see how you manage and, you know, give it a go. Give it a red hot go. Yeah.